Hello and welcome back. This is Aspen Talks Health and I'm Dr. Nicola. I am so excited to share with you today a wonderful alternative method for healing. It's called the Kriya Method. And today joining me is the Himit Singh Devault. He is the founder of the Kriya Method and I am welcoming you to the show. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining. So let's dive right in. Tell us about the Kriya Method. What is well, it? The Kriya Method is a three methodology aspect to healing. The first part is actually called the Kriya Method. It is a neuromuscular therapy, therapeutic bodywork methodology. Okay. And this is what you experienced when we got together. Mm -hmm. And it's a very deep tissue release. We're primarily focusing on the fascia tissue. The second aspect is Kundalini Yoga and meditation. This came to me from my spiritual teacher, Yogi Bhajan. And this is kind of what we refer to as the kind of the post-treatment uh, aspect in that people come to me for a treatment. And then this is, I give them the yoga and the meditation to do afterwards so they can empower themselves to move forward with the momentum we created from the, the treatment session we had. Mm. And the third part is called Sat Nam Rasayan. That's the healing branch of Kundalini Yoga. Uh, Yogi Bhajan was an amazing healer, and that's what he used when he healed people. And so maybe in the mid-80s, he took one of his you know, favorite students and trained him into this healing methodology. And when they finished, a few years later, he says, you and I are the only two people in the world who know how to do this. Wow. So now you have to teach others. And so his name is Guru Singh, I mean, uh, Guru Dev Singh, and he's who I've been studying with. And so I do the Kriya Method body work, the Sat Nam Rasayan during the treatments, and then the Kundalini Yoga and Meditations post-treatment program. Okay. Can you explain a little bit more about the Kriya Method itself? Okay. The... Methodology came from Mark Lamb. This is a good example of the two degrees of separation. Mm. Yogi Bhajan moved to the United States from India in 1968. Mark Lamb was one of his first students, and Mark developed a healing methodology of body work. He called it BioSync. And he got to that point from Yogi Bhajan's encouragement. And how this is how spiritual teachers work. Mark had been in his class for a few months, and one day during class, Yogi Bhajan said, Mark, go work on her shoulder. She's in a lot of pain. And Mark went, he goes, you know what to do when you get there. And so Mark went over there, just used his intuition and did a little move on her. And so he goes, why did he ask me to do that? Because there are chiropractors and doctors and massage therapists in this class. Right. He realized that was his spiritual teacher telling him, that's the direction you need to go to in your life. Hmm. So Mark developed this methodology. And he combined it with a lot of Chinese traditional medicine and uh, practice of qigong, moving the qi energy. We're manip manipulating the tissue with the arm, hand, and foot, but at the same time, we're moving qi through the tissue, and that creates the opening of the fascia. Interesting. So my experience was it was, it was quite a deep tissue. Yes. And then the movement of the qi, the, the, you felt a little energy flow. Is that what that yes. you're describing? We describe it as a outward expanding spiral. Okay. The Qigong practice develops the strength and power of qi in your dantian, which is in the yoga tradition, your third chakra. So part of my practice, my duty as a healer, is to cultivate that qi. Mm -hmm. When working with you, for example, I drop my arm into your tissue, set my qi in there, it's almost like an electromagnetic connection, mm -hmm. lengthen the tissue underneath my arm, put that area in traction, and then it unwinds. I twist my body, use the intention, use the use of qigong techniques to move that qi through my arm, almost like a needle and hypodermic needle, to eject that qi into your tissue. And the unwinding happens because that spiral is going outward, expanding, and the fascia tissue mm. is typically very tightly bound or armored, and that what creates the release. And as you experience, it can be very deep and very intense at times. Yeah, but very helpful, very yes. powerful. Good. Good. T tell us more about the fascia. The fascia tissue is in the vernacular we call it the connective tissue. Okay. It's the long stringy fibers that hold us together. If you've ever had a steak, the, the white gristle, that's the fascia of the cow. Interesting. The fascia of the human body is a matrix that moves through the top of the head to the bottom of your foot. And it's supposed to be slippery, slimy, soft and flexible. But what happens with uh, life's dramas and traumas, it begun, begins to armor the mm. body. Let's say you have a bad fall on the mountain skiing and you twist your knee. It's not seriously hurt, but the fascia will begin to cross-link, thicken, and harden around that spot as protection. protection. So when you're going through your rehab or just naturally healing, it's isolating that joint. 
the joint eventually heals, but that fascia is still tightly bound. And through time, age, and lots of accidents on the mountain, we get very tight and armored in our bodies. And mm. these create uh, dysfunctional patterns of movement. And that's what we're working on is to erase those. And we also have an emotional aspect, a psychological, in that we have life's challenges. Right. Say, for example, you go through a divorce and you're very heartbroken. That's going to manifest itself into the tissue. Your shoulders will come forward. You're protecting your heart. The tissue around the ribs is going to tighten up, and that tissue is the fascia. And it just is a naturally protective aspect of our body's anatomy. Hmm. And that what we work on is to open that up, release it. You see a lot of people yes. kind of protect their heart. And so, so, so it's releasing here? Is that a part of the technique? Is, is, is it releasing in the, the area that you see it yes. tightening? What happens is we're unconsciously protecting ourselves. Right. And the body's responding to that thought. And so we do kind of crunch forward. And what we need to do is open up the chest, open up the shoulders, mm -hmm. and feel confident and comfortable to open our hearts to the world. Right. And with this work, we can break down the uh, intercostal muscles between the ribs and the pectorals, and also just the general area around the sternum. And then energetically, that's going to open up the heart, and you feel more comfortable letting yourself or allowing yourself to be part of the world. Hmm. Fascinating. What other conditions can this help? Anything. That's, that's one of the reasons I use a three-part healing methodology. Uh, there's nothing we cannot address. Okay. I, most people come to me initially because they're in pain, right. physical pain. Yeah. They, the word around town is, oh, this guy can help you. From ski instructors, <laughs> you know, word of mouth. And that's just opening the door. Yeah. And most people come in with a pretty open mind. But some people come in with a really tight belief system. It's like, I want somebody to, to help me. I want to work with people who want to be self-empowered and to create a co-creative process of moving them forward. Hmm. I'm not a healer. I don't, I've never felt comfortable calling myself a healer. I'm a teacher. I'm teaching the body and the mind how to let go, allow the trauma to manifest, and let go. And that's part of the process. Have you found that when you're getting into those tight spots yeah, the, the that the body, trauma releases? Yeah, the body is a, uh, I, I used to say videotape over our lives, maybe I should get more of it. It's a, a digital imprint in the body of what our thoughts and memories and emotions are. And we have found through years of this work, we have a template of the body. So if you go through a heartbreak, work in the middle of the chest, and also on the backside. Mm. Uh, you have some childhood trauma, let's say for example, a, a distant parent or a divorce at a very early age, we know where in the body that's going to manifest itself. The left side of the body is the feminine. The right side of the body is the masculine. I work on somebody's left glute. And they go, oh, I didn't know I was tight down there. It's like, what was your relationship like with your mother at a young age? Oh, she was a little overwhelmed being a mother, and she was very distant. And I really never felt much of a connection to her until I became older as a teenager. She, wow. didn't, she didn't want to know how to deal with children, but she knew how to deal with teenagers and young adults. And that manifests itself as a tissue memory. We have issues in our tissues, yeah. <laughs> and we are very adaptable as human beings in what happens in our lives. We store it, forget about it, but it still is there. Yeah. Yes, I've just been learning about ACEs, Adverse yes. Childhood Experiences, mm -hmm. and how they manifest later on in life as an autoimmune disease, cancer, asthma, and it's been fascinating because I have type 1 diabetes, and, and that's an autoimmune reaction. Yeah. And now that I'm digging, I've, I took the test and I've got three or four aces. Okay. Uh, that's pretty high on the mm -hmm. score. So it's fascinating to me because it's really diving deep into what causes autoimmune. It's really interesting. What I try not to do during a treatment is give them information while I'm finding out. Okay. What I would be doing is I'm reinforcing these dysfunctional patterns. Hmm. Our idea is, this came from Mark, my teacher, is that we want to be in the present moment. All that happened in the past. Okay. Can't change that. Right. What we can change is this moment and what's moving forward. So, for example, a client comes in, I do a client intake sheet that give me a little idea of what's going on in the bodies. We have a conversation, create a little rapport, and they start going through the whole history of the, the car accident. I don't want to cut them off, but I don't want to give them too much time because they're just reinforcing. They're reliving it. Reliving that experience. Right. So my typical response is, well, that's interesting. How would you like it to be? 
sometimes it catches them off guard. It's like, well, obviously I'm here to get better. It's like, no, it's not, it's not obvious. Let's talk about that. And we go through a quick process of closing their eyes, see yourself walking out of here with no pain in your ideal functioning state, and it's happening today, now. And that gives them a whole new paradigm of their bodies and their health. Good. I want to challenge. I agree with you 100%, but I want to challenge it just to play devil's advocate Please. because, okay, type one isn't supposedly curable. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I actually believe it is, but let's just say we've been told it's not. If I, I'm, I'm, I almost feel like I'm lying to myself that I am healed. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. <laughs> when I'm not. So how do you get past that kind of block? That is healthy skepticism. Okay. Keyword is healthy. And it's okay to have doubt, but we believe belief creates the experience. The higher degree you believe, the higher degree the change is going to happen. Hmm. And it's, uh, sometimes you can say you fake it till you make it, which is valid, but we believe consciousness can change cell behavior. There's so many examples in the world, that not just from my experience, but from others who have had some very challenging health issues. And the doctors don't know how these people got better because it didn't make sense. Hmm. A good example was a young boy, I think he was like seven or eight years old, years ago was diagnosed with leukemia. He was a huge Star Wars fan. So he just could use his imagination, imagine these star fighters, zip, 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 the cancer cells. And he just had a very vivid imagination. And he just did that all the time. He just imagined these star fighters killing his cancer cells. Huh. He went into remission and it's okay. Wow. So to your question, I appreciate the challenge because it all comes down to what your belief and intention is. And even if the results are not what you had hoped for, you're going to be in a much more ideal functioning state just from moving in that direction. Yeah. It's, it's, it's empowering, too. Yeah, it's, it's positive thinking, whatever label you want to put to it. It's an attitude of gratitude that... Why is this happening to me? No, why is this happening for me? Right. Kind of embrace the experience. It's like, okay. Because many times if you get you know, some really bad news in, on a health issue, it's like all of a sudden you go into depression and that's mm. just feeding the dysfunction. Right. So part of my job is to help using language to help people understand that they can empower themselves and change their lives. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting topic or point that you made that to not see it as your, to, to shift, you're just shifting the mindset, basically. Changing the paradigm. Yeah. That's so you're, yeah, you're moving away from this is how it is and yes. this, is, this is what I want. Yes. Not what I want, but what it is. This is what now. I need in my life right now. Mm. What lesson am I going to gain from this? What life experience is this that I'm supposed to have? Good. If you can change that paradigm, you can really start changing your, your life. And if you're going through a really difficult time, it won't be as difficult with that positive attitude. Love it. Mm -hmm. uh, love it. Um, you mentioned on, I read on your website that you specialize in concussions. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, I was working with Mark in the, my training with him, and after the train, I would spend, we, he lived in Southern California. So I'd go out there and just spend weekends with him, working with my teacher and mentor. And he showed me this little move he did on people's heads. He just kind of cavalierly said, oh, this is really good for concussions. So I may have a little note of that. And then years later, I was thinking, wait a minute, there's a meditation that Yogi Bhajan taught us that he says helps repair brain tissue. And so we worked with the idea of doing that as a treatment in the body work with that. We're working on essentially opening up the spine, getting the life force energy prana to move through the body into the head. So it, what brain tissue needs when it's mm. been damaged, whether it's from Alzheimer's, concussions, is fresh pranic energy to heal. Also, increased circulation of blood and the cerebral spinal fluid from the spinal cord. And so the body work, about a 45 minute to an hour treatment is just to get the spine opened up and I do that move on the head. And then the post-treatment program is a very easy yoga set to move the spine, move the energy, and a meditation. And the meditation is very fascinating because a doctor in uh, Tucson uh, 
specializes in people who have Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm -hmm. And he actually went and got research done on this meditation, and the results were remarkable. The model was someone who had early signs of Alzheimer's would go in to get an MRI. They would go then to the next room, do this meditation for 12 minutes, go back in and get another MRI, and areas of brain that have been dark or you know, non-functional were lit up. Wow. And so they started doing more work with you know, blood work and such, and they found that the enzyme telomere has yeah. been secreted and is a very, very high level. And so what Yogi Bhajan talked about in more of a theoretic yogic aspect actually got some tangible results from the medical community. Love it. And so I soaked the Dr. Dharma Singh, and I said, oh, you're working with Alzheimer's, which is fantastic. Do you think this meditation will work with concussions? It's a quick pause. He's like, of course. Yeah, it's brain tissue needs to be repaired. And Wonderful. I had some very positive results. One client came to me for two treatments, and I gave her the yoga and the meditation. Didn't hear from her for a long time. Then she came back and said, my gosh, it changed my life. Wow. The doctors had suggested that they're going to drill a hole in her skull to relieve the pressure from the concussion. And she said that is not going to happen. Oof. And so she found from this two treatments, yoga and meditation, she was able to relieve the pressure and repair the brain tissue and has no more symptoms. Incredible. I would love to do, you said you were willing to do a demo. Yes. You want to do it now? I would love to. Okay. This is called curtain clear. Okay. And Do Kriya, to... well, it actually kind of goes back a little back, back around to what the Kriya method means. Kriya is an action that has specific intention and result. Okay. So Kirtan Kriya is, we call it a, the singing meditation. Because Kirtan in uh, the yogic tradition is singing. You're singing mm -hmm. the exhaustion of the experience of the divine within you. So we're singing a four part mantra. The word is Sa, Ta, Na, Ma. We call these the five primal sounds. So it doesn't have any meaning, but the yogis gave it meaning. Infinity, life, transition or death, rebirth. And we use a mantra. So sa, first finger, ta, middle finger, na, ring finger, ma, pinky finger. Okay. And so it'll sound like this. Sa, ta, na, ma. As we go through the mantra, we use the mudra. Okay. The reason for this is the fingers are the extension of the brain. If you ever seen the image of a child in utero, we're developing with our hands up next to the head. So the, the nerve endings in the fingers and the brain are very closely connected. So when you apply pressure to a fingertip, you actually can feel different aspects of the brain lighting up. The first finger is the third eye. Middle finger is more the frontal lobe. The crown is the sun finger, closest connection to the sun. Yeah. And the pinky finger is the medulla behind the head. And so with a little practice and an awareness, when you're doing this, you actually feel your brain sort of being stimulated as you're doing this. Wow. Do you push hard? Yes. Firm pressure. sa ta na ma And what is interesting, at least to me it was, yeah. is that we start singing out loud. Okay. And that's your projection to the world. We do that for a minute, then we go into a whisper. That's your longing. You're asking for guidance or asking for help. Then the next minute, actually the next two minutes, we do the same mudra, same mantra in silence. Okay. And then we come out of that whispering, sa ta na ma. Then we finish with sa ta na ma. So we do it for the minimal time. Okay. Ideally, we do it for 12 minutes, but for our time together here, we'll also give the, you and the audience a chance to experience what this is about. Okay. The also is very important is that your eyes are closed. Focus at your third eye point. This is going to direct energy from your eyes to your pituitary gland. Then we also have a visualization. With each sa, ta, na, ma, see or visualize a bolt of light coming down through the top of your head, going to the middle of your brain, then making the turn and going out through your third eye point. Sa, ta, na, ma. Okay, interesting. That's working on getting your pineal gland and your pituitary gland working together. That connection between those two glands, the pineal gland is located right in the middle of your brain. The pituitary is right at your third eye above your sinus cavity. The yogis have such regard for that relationship, they call it the golden cord. Hmm. And that visualization is strengthening that golden cord. And so your glands secrete, 
changes the blood chemistry, the mantra, the sound current is creating a vibration, which is going to lighten up your brain. Okay. You ready to start? Yeah, lots to remember. Yeah. Okay, you want me to repeat it? <laughs> no, Okay. I got it. I'm going to use my cell phone with the timer. Okay. And so I'll be, if they're watching, I'm going to be peeking every once in a while to see what the time is. Don't we're going to do what first minute is Satanama. Just follow me. Okay. Then we're going to the whisper. Okay. We call it a stage whisper. Like if you're an actor on stage, you can't just whisper or oh, they wouldn't hear you. Mm. So it's very breathy. Okay. And then we just do it in silence. And then when I come out with whispering, just follow my lead. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Satanama, Satanama, Satanama. Satanama, 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 Satanama. Satanama, 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 Whisper. Silence.
Satanama 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 Inhale Hold the breath for a moment and exhale you can just relax and slowly open your eyes and how are you mm, feeling? Good, it's very peaceful. Yes, the meditation works on all aspects of the brain. If mm. you're a student preparing for an exam, you can do this the night before the exam just to get your mind kind of organized. If you're uh, approaching the, the golden years and you're concerned about you know, memory loss, you can't find your car keys, you, why did I walk into this room? Mm. This is a very good meditation to revitalize the brain. The neurotransmitters are being reactivated. Interesting. And if you had trauma to the brain, a concussion, or just a blow to the head, this is going to help repair that area. Very good to know. Yes. That must be very helpful. Mm. It's probably preventative as well. Yes, I do it all the time. Actually, I'm getting ready to start another 40-day cycle with this meditation. I do, it, I do it once a year, at least 40 days, just to charge up the batteries. Love it. Well, we are out of time here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> such a pleasure to have you, and thank you for that. How can people find you? I have, well, I can give you my phone number. Or actually, you know what? We'll put that up on the website. That, I and, like that. Yeah? Yes. Does that work? That's works for me. All right. So as always, check out AspenTalksHealth.com for more information and him its contact information. Thank you for tuning in.